I'm Peter Block, and this is 2020 TCT virtual this year once again. I'm here for ACC.org. With me is Kim Eagle from Michigan and Deepak Bhatt from Boston. And we're here to review what's happened on this exciting day in TCT virtual day one. Two things to talk about that are important. Prospect Absorb and Tyco STEMI. So I'm going to start with you, Kim. Uh, let's talk about Prospect Absorb. So this is a, a really interesting study, and it, it's asking the question, uh, when we treat a patient with an ACS and we treat the culprit lesion, if we find other lesions that appear to have large uh, lipid content, potentially vulnerable plaques, should we go after those? Uh, and, you know, it's a modest trial. I think it, for me, Peter, it establishes the potential that this should be subjected to a larger trial. The, the relative safety of doing this was there, uh, and there's some suggestion that target vessel uh, endpoints are met if you do go after these alternative uh, lesions. It's not game-changing for me, but it does set the precedent for a larger trial. I'm going to I'm going to disagree with you. I think it potentially has great precedent uh, setting opportunities. Uh, Deepak, you're an interventional cardiologist. What are your thoughts? Well, I mean, I'd certainly like the opportunity to stent more lesions. So I, I, I like that aspect of it. Uh, though I do agree with Kim ultimately that you know we need more data, and, and I think the plan is to do more. So it's an interesting concept that perhaps stenting mild lesions that have vulnerable plaque characteristics might prevent future ischemic events. You know, it goes back to something Bernie Meyer, who was Andrew Skrinsik's first fellow, had raised, this idea of plaque sealing. And it was a concept that was initially popular right after DS became available, where I think some interventionists were going ahead and plaque sealing without any data. Some of them got in trouble, I think, for doing that. But, but you know, if there's actual data supporting it in the future, Conceptually, there's some appeal to it, but on the flip side, you know, it might be those vulnerable plaques are best treated with systemic medical therapy more so than with focal stenting. But, you know, we'll see. This opens the door for future studies uh, that are adequately powered for clinical events. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you. I'm, I'm intrigued by this because we've struggled so long with this business of the long plaque that doesn't have terrible stenosis that's greater than 80 percent and all that chi chi that we've talked about so long and yet uh, you begin to wonder what atherosclerosis is really all about and what the disease is and this may be a, a, a look into the possibility of dealing with atherosclerosis in a more preemptive way and uh, I, I think we ought to keep eye, eye on these data and see what happens when a larger trial is done okay Let's move on. Tyco STEMI. So I started with Kim last time. I'll go to you, Deepak. Sure. So this is a good trial that randomized patients essentially to three months adapt or 12 months adapt after a STEMI. And the de-escalation strategy here in the three-month arm was to go to Ticago or monotherapy. So it's sort of like the twilight trial was. That wasn't specifically ACS. It included ACS patients, but there are also non-ACS patients. This is specifically ACS, meaning STEMI. So these are STEMI patients. And the bottom line was for net adverse clinical events, the three-month strategy looked better because the ischemic events, the rates were low, but weren't different between the two arms and bleeding, as you might expect, was less with the shorter duration of that. So this goes along with all the other sort of modest-sized trials that are out there that are supporting that three months of DAPT is probably good enough from a stent perspective for many patients. That doesn't, however, mean that longer term DAP couldn't be useful in select high ischemic, low bleeding risk patients. I still think there's an abundance of data supporting that concept. But from a stent perspective, not looking at the patient's ischemic risk, but just the stent associated risk, yeah, I think you can get away with three months of DAP, especially if you're de-escalating to an ADP receptor antagonist such as Picagalor. Kim, your thoughts? you agree with uh, Deepak here? I do. I, th I think the sub-analysis in this uh, particular study is important, and that was that the patients who had more complex coronary anatomy, the trend lines certainly looked like the dual antiplatelet strategy was probably better. And if this was a larger trial, we could have done those subgroup analysis and shown, I think, independent benefit of DAPT when you encounter those patients with more complex anatomy. 
Yeah, you know, I, I looked at these data as well. And I always come back to, you know, what, what's the coronary disease underlying this? The worse it is, the more you probably have to worry about it and probably have to give a little bit more medication to keep it under control. Uh, and these data support that. Uh, it's not good to have a lot of coronary disease, is it? No, I don't. It's, take your statin, Peter. <laughs> there you go. Okay, well, that's the end of day one. Thank you both for going over these uh, trials with me. Uh, and we'll see what happens for the rest of TCT Virtual.